there's one person I choose to please and his name is the Holy Ghost that's the only one I worry that matters is the only one who I value is the only one who's I um, who's who I want to please when the fire got hot last night some people ran out it is okay because if you don't let go of your devil you're gonna go out with your devil are you guys with me so I'm waiting for that point that boiling point and I'm waiting for that place where the church can ascend where the heavens can be opened and uh, where the glory comes and it is always a place of breakthrough it is always uh, that is what we that is what we attain for when we have we don't have these meetings for the show and entertainment I don't come up here to give you a beautiful teaching we come up here to break atmospheres okay we come up here to shift atmospheres over Cape Town to shift it. There's a lot of demonic stuff. There's a lot of sick and sensitive churches that is void of the power of God. So what are we doing? We're shifting mindsets, shifting atmospheres. Are you guys with me? We spoke about money loss tonight. One person got so mad. They also ran out. It was the third one that ran out. You can have your seats. And... Uh, uh, you know, imagine you have a demon that, that keeps you so poor that that demon makes you hate money. Please get, if there's any demon you need to get rid of, it's that one. I just, all I did was I read a verse and they got angry. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, so we what are we doing in Cape Town as I said we're shifting atmospheres we are shifting um, uh, atmospheres we are shifting um, these things and uh, when I said that to Pastor Stefan it's not undermining people like how dare you talk to my pastor like that I knew him longer than you do so it is okay we are not we're just provoking you. That is all what we are doing. Are you guys with me? And, uh, and we're not provoking you. We're just provoking the devil behind you. Okay, if there is one. So if you felt uncomfortable, it is because there was something that might be there that's not supposed to be there. And... Uh, There's going to be a place where the Lord showed me during the conference that we're going to reach where you will hear demons scream out. You will see the glory come in. You'll see fire fall. Wednesday night, the fire of God is going to fall. Tomorrow night is going to be a myriad of prophecies and there's going to be power impartation. The Lord spoke about mantles. And tonight, I want to give you a secret. We're going to be ministering and prophesying over people. But where's the lady we prayed for last night here? Is she here? Are you here? Stand up for me. So, are you paying? No, nothing. No pain. <laughs> so, 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 down for me like this. Okay, I'm sure she has no pain. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be full of joy as well. Yeah. When there was steel rods in your back. Yeah. When there was knee operations, lung collapsed. How many of you said, I said, I sense the lungs, the, the back. And there's even in the blood where God is doing healing. Are you guys with me? And it will be a sign. But what am I looking for? I'm looking to see who has faith. 
I'm looking to see who has faith. Because in the atmosphere is healing and deliverance. And it is yours if you can snatch it, if you can grab a hold of it. It can be yours. Don't let that religious godsdienstige geest hold you in your chair and not be able to receive anything. No, 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 no. Ah. I see at least we cured some, some, some group there. That is good. Last night they just refused. They just sat. Until the one devil ran. Then, then it was freer. It's amazing. Christians, a whole group of Christians can be influenced by one devil. Have your seats. Have your seats. Welcome to Pastor Sam, Pastor Sam and Pastor Pam, you know, Sam and Pam. Welcome from Axe Church, welcome to Pastor Kevin from Dominion Church. And uh, thank you so much, thank you so much for gracing us with your presence. Mm, I'm just going as the Holy Ghost leads. Zebroska akeno rodoska drebeduska takele banduska ta ayate maya. Now unto him, listen to Ephesians 3 verse 20. And we have over a thousand people online right now from all over the world. So I want to welcome you. Stay tuned, stay connected every night. Receive where you are. We had so many people receiving miracles online. We had so many people receiving uh, miracles, deliverances, breakthrough online in other countries. And uh, we actually didn't even advertise this as being online. So, uh, you know, and even with that, we have over a thousand people. Last night, I think it went to about 1,200. It'll start lifting now. So go through to Ephesians 3 verse 20. It says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask. Say with me, all that we ask or think. There's a God that can do much more than you can even perceive in your heart or think what is a you think a four-bedroom house. He thinks double or triple that size. We have a God that lives in an overabundance. He rejoices when you prosper. Are you guys with me? Now listen, listen, listen. We ask or think according, say with me, according. To the power that works in us. Now, it says that we have a God that is, who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ever ask or think. But it is determined by something. It is determined according to the power that works in us. Give me the Greek of that power. Is a dunamis. Dunamis. So, because there's dunamis, iskas, kratos, and etc. Epic haetso, and many others more. Tomorrow night we might get into dimensions of power. Because the church only knows two. The church only knows exousia and dunamis. Where Jesus moved in kratos, iskas, epic haetso. When he walked on the water, and the molecular density of the water changed and shifted so that his feet could walk upon the water. Dunam, according to the dunamis that works in us, that energeo in us. So this is what it says in the Greek. Now to him who is able, has the ability to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we also think, according, determined, according, but a measure, according to the measure of the dunamis that is energized in us. Now, how do I get a dunamis? Acts chapter number 1 verse 8. For you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Wait 
tarry in Jerusalem until the promise is sent from on high. Tarry here, says Jesus, in Jerusalem. So we know they tarried in the upper room, Pentecost, power came down, and it rested upon them. Dunamis power, baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. But that dunamis is dormant unless it is energized. Are you guys with me? There needs to be an energizing. There needs to be an energy from heaven. Stop getting new. I don't think new age right now. Everything that the devil creates comes from God. If you speak of energy, it is in the Bible. If you speak of auras, it's in the Bible. I'll show you. As for traveling, it's in the Bible. We have so many people attacking us. Oh, Leon does magic. He does, one person said, I do sleight of hand when I prophesy. I didn't know it was that good. I was that good, but uh, I do sleight of hand. We give the devil so much credit. There are things that prophets are allowed to do. That is for our partners. I don't want to share that. Because there are things that prophets are allowed to do that others are not allowed to do. Mm. Let me just say something just to make some people upset. Where's, if you look at the body of Christ, where's the evangelist? He's in the feet. Where's the pastor? I assume he's in the hands and the ring finger, you know. Uh, uh, uh. You see the joints and the members. And the Bible says that Christ is the head and we are the body. Where's the prophet? The mouth, which is in the head. So, let me just explain that there's an order when it comes to the kingdom. That makes people, the Bible says, apostles first, then prophets second, then medical workers, teachers, da, 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 and it has a hierarchy in the church. But we somehow think that, uh, you know, that um, uh, 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 all are the same. No, 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 no. A receptionist is not the same as a COO. The CEO speaks different to a COO and entrusts different secrets to a COO than a receptionist. Both of them are valuable, but not both of them are important. Both of them have value of life, a human being, but not both of them are important to the company. And it works the same in the kingdom of God. Not both of them are valuable, the same value in the company. So you need to increase your value and your importance in the kingdom, which comes by a growing in grace. God, the Bible says, grow in grace by the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, by the uh, gnosko of our Lord Jesus Christ, the intimate experience. It's one thing to read the Bible and that will give you knowledge. Because that is where Rhema comes from. But when he appears to you in the form of an angel or a theophany and he speaks to you, it is when grace is extended. There's a big difference between a minister who plants a church and just plants a church, another thing, but a minister who plants a church who had an encounter with God. Why? The measure of grace has been increased. When your grace is increased, Things work with an ease. It is just people be like, how do you do this? Grace. Not grace like in a license to sin. Grace as a measure. Are you guys with me? You can copy everything that I do. And it won't work. Unless you have the grace. And that grace comes from Jesus Christ himself. The Bible says, it says in Ephesians chapter number 4 verse 7, grace is given to all according, but to, say this with me, say to each one of us, 
grace was given. So to every one of you have grace, am I right? It says to each one of us, grace was given. According, say with me, according. Again, the same as Ephesians 3 verse 20. According to the measure of Christ's gift. What is Christ's gift? Verse 9 tells you it is the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. So he says each one in the church, every believer in the church has a measure of grace relative to the measure of the gift of Christ they sit under. As I said last night, some people can be in a church for 20 years and they can never work one miracle because the measure of Christ's gift on the pulpit is small. Or you can sit under measure a grace gift that you know that is full of grace and you're there two months and you do what they do or you do more than what they do because of impartation. So the house where you are in is very important. The vessel that anoints you, like I said last night, is of utmost importance. The vessel that anointed Saul caused him to fail. And the vessel that anointed David caused him to succeed. The vessel that anointed Saul was a man-made flask vessel. And the vessel that anointed David was God-ordained. God-made. Are you guys with me? I pray that there will be an increase of grace upon your life tonight. That even as you leave this place, that you will feel that grace has shifted in you. That it has moved and increased. It has multiplied inside of you. Have your seats. I still, I still, I still, I still feel we have to still break it open. We're almost there. Almost there. How do I break? How do you break it open? Say with your revelation. That is how you break atmospheres open. So energy. So he says the dunamis, Ephesians 3 verse 20, can only be operating in your life according to to the energy that is working in you. According to you being energized from heaven. I can be baptized with the Holy Ghost, filled with power, pray in other tongues, lay hands on the sick and they don't get healed because I'm not energized. And we miss the word energy in Ephesians 3 verse 20, and I can go to Ephesians chapter number 6, and I can go to Ephesians chapter number 1, I can go to Philippians chapter number 1, uh, 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 every, uh, sorry, Philemon chapter number 1, everywhere where it was, where energy is. The word energy. So, I will be a dormant Christian with dormant power unless I am energized from heaven. How do I get energized from heaven? That is the question. Because you prayed for many years. Many of you read the words. How do you get energized from heaven? How do we get according to the power that according to the dunamis that is energized in us. So you have a dunamis that is not energized. And then you have a dunamis that is energized. Hmm. Are you guys with me? I'm, I'm not going too fast. Enoch had so much power that in fact when he was walking, scholars will tell you, his power was so much he couldn't be in public. If people will look at him in the eyes, they would evaporate because there was too much God on him. And God says, Enoch, no, no, no. I have, it's illegal for you to be on earth. I have to remove you 
because you have been changed into me and it is illegal for me to be on the earth that's why God had to come through the body of a virgin born through a virgin he had to come through a legalized system and now he's saying he's saying Enoch you're being changed into me because there was one word that began to change Enoch into God and he was energized from heaven that when people would look at him what happened when Jesus was on the mountain of transfiguration the Bible says that Peter James and John they looked at him and Elijah and Moses was there with them and they looked at Jesus face and his face was shining as bright as the Sun Moses coming down from the mountaintop after encountering God for 40 days and 40 nights he walks down the mountain and in fact the Bible says that lightning rays were shooting out of his face the people ran 15 miles away from the mountain having diarrhea and throwing up at the same time because of the terror just by looking at Moses face and yet Moses was not taken even yet but Enoch was taken because he had more power and Enoch became so intertwined with God we call it in the Hebrew kava with God that he became God when people would look at him they would see God God was oozing out of his eyes oozing out of his mouth and the Lord said you're becoming dangerous on the earth now I have to take you and the Bible says he walked and suddenly he was not for God took him and he's one of the prophets that has to come back to die a physical death a natural death are you guys with me? So how do we get energized that dunamis can truly operate and work? Go with me to Isaiah 40 verse 31. And as I said, we will minister to people. We will lay hands. We will do all those things. I just always wait for the right moment. And for me, it is very important to get revelation through to you. There's nothing that changes a human heart the way that revelation and the presence of God does. Principles will never change a person. You know, people ask us also many times, how do we get people to jump like that and to get excited and jump up and down? We're not asking them to jump up and down. It is just... It's a grace. It's, re it's because the moment you preach revelation and someone's spirit identifies with it, the Bible says their spirit has to leap. <laughs> when Elizabeth came into contact with Mary, the baby in a womb leaped. So there's a moment where your spirit man will jump and will leap because there's a connection to heaven or there's a connection to revelation. It simply means you are spiritually alive. That's what it means. That's what it means. There's no, like I said, we have a lot of people asking us, how do we get it right? How do we get it right? How do we get it right? We just preach the word of the Lord. Go with me to Isaiah 40 verse 31. But those who wait, say with me, wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. I want us to focus on this word wait. It's the word kava. Because remember I said energized. How do we get energized? The Bible says these words. It says that the Spirit of God will quicken our mortal bodies. It will quicken us. King David says quicken me that I may call upon you 
Revive me, O Lord, that I may pray and call upon your name. But in the King James it says, Quicken me that I may call upon you. Are you guys with me? So I cannot even pray to God without being quickened, which is to be energized. So unless I am energized, I cannot even pray to God. Go try pray. You'll sit in your room. You'll be like having your prayer list. Jesus, thank you for this. Thank, you won't be able to get in your knees and go, Les kabreskete lavada radoskete kede banamaya. Bros kabreke neloskete ke eska a. Les ekenoskete kele baya. Presko dele dele bruska te kede man bruska te kede le. For hours. Kelas kede le brena noske te kena bruska te kena ma. Hefso kede le vreske te kede le bena ma. Ha bruska dele bena ma ske te kede le bena ma. Zeda na ma na ma ske te kede le bena ma. And you go for hours and hours and hours. You need to be energized. You need to be quickened for that to happen. Without the quickening of the Lord and the energizing of the Lord, that cannot happen. You'll be in your room, you'll be praying like that for five minutes, and you'll be like, oh. and you'll think of things. Because unless God draws you, you cannot pray. Unless we are energized and quickened, we cannot pray. So how do we get quickened and energized? That is the question. Because if I do it out of myself, it will be out of my own flesh. It would be, it would be fleshly, soulish. You know, Watchman Nee said something very powerful. He says, everything you do out of a soul realm is sin. So you can be of Christians that read their Bible soulishly and they're sinning. There are Christians that pray soulishly and they're sinning. Are you guys with me? <laughs> there are Christians that worship God soulishly and they're in sin. They're sinning because they're not doing it spiritually. The Bible says He's looking for those who will worship Him in spirit and in truth. Have you ever heard those ones? Everybody's worshiping. I mean, it's like a gentle moment. And then they go, and they make some noise, some scream. You're in the flesh and in the soul. Shut up. Devil. Please don't be one of those Christians. Are you guys with me? There's a river that is flowing a direction. You're going another direction. It's a soulish. The soul is always an enemy to the things of God. The soul has to get submitted to the spirit. But that is teaching on the spirit soul body, which I don't want to get into right now. So say with me, to wait. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. The word wait is kava in the Hebrew. It is the same word the Bible uses with Enoch when it says, that Enoch walked with God and suddenly he was not for God took him. The word took is kava. It means to intertwine. It means he waited on God. Are you guys with me? And go see how long it was before, how many years it was before Enoch was taken. Enoch had a family. He had children. There are seasons. Go see how many years it took for Daniel before he saw the Lord Jesus Christ. It was not like immediately. There are dimensions. His first vision that happened, I believe, in Daniel 8 or 7. It was just a certain uh, apparition. And then you see the next one, it was more intense. And the next one, it was more intense. Until the next one, which we call a Mara vision where it becomes physical and it affects everything in the physical realm. Which means if I have a vision and somebody is in my midst, they feel the vision that I'm having. And they'll be on the ground or they'll be seeing a great light. It's your highest form of vision. 
but it doesn't happen. It takes years to get there. Abraham, it took him years before God came and visited him physically. Are you guys with me? So cover, say with me cover. It means to wait, but this is what it means. It's got seven meanings. It means to gather together like a gathering of the saints. So to wait on God means to worship together. It means to gather together for intention to have one purpose and outcome. To gather together as a church for one intention, to encounter God. To gather together, being knit and bound together in sympathy, oneness. When the worshippers, the Bible says in the book of Chronicles, when the worshippers were worshipping the Lord, with one voice, the glory of the Lord came down in a cloud with a kavod glory. And the ministers and the minstrels could not even stand on their feet to minister to the Lord. Number four, it means... To gather together and eagerly expecting and awaiting. Say with me, eagerly expecting and awaiting. It means to patiently wait. To become still and just wait until you become one with God. Number six. It means to become still and just wait until you become one with God. Number seven, wait until you are intertwined with God like a piece of rope. That's what happened with Enoch. As you take, have a rope and they have three strings that makes up a rope, that's what intertwine means. That you can become one with the one. Go to Psalm 62 verse 1. I want to give you the key to power tonight. Because dunamis cannot be activated unless it's energized. It, is, it cannot flow out of a person's life unless the energy of God is there, unless it's energized and quickened. But how do we get quickened? This is what we're getting into tonight. Truly my soul silently waits for God. From Him comes my salvation. Verse 2. Say with me, silently wait. He only is my rock and my salvation is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. It is just means wait. Listen, waiting is a stillness, not quietness. There's a difference between quiet and stillness. Quiet is natural. Stillness is spiritual. Be still. And know that I am God. Not be quiet. Be still. It is a spiritual uh, 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 phenomenon. It is a spiritual ability where your spirit can just become still before God. It was John Wesley's mother who had 12 kids or something. And uh, she would just, she would take a prayer cloth or something or I'm not exactly sure what but prayer shawl or but she would put it over her face on a rocking chair and for an hour she would sit there and the kids knew that when that was over her face you don't come near her and you don't make one noise because that was a secret place yet she had 12 children I might be wrong I think it is John Wesley's mother 12 children you can be still in a place full of noise. It is your spirit that becomes still. Go Psalm 130 verse 5. Psalm 130 verse 5. I'm going to give you a few scriptures just to get the word out. And then I'm going to minister to you and we'll be finished by 10 tonight. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. Say with him, my soul waits. And in His Word, I do hope. Meaning my soul. What is my soul? It is my emotions, my will, my intellect, your thoughts. Everything must be on pause and must wait on Him. 
you see, I'm speaking about a realm that will require a funeral on your knees to enter into. It will require everything around you to become dead. That until you are in a place of prayer, where you are in a funeral on your knees, you are dead on your knees, and all you are doing is praying. Or you're just worshiping God, or you are just still, and there's no distraction. No alert, no notification. You are still. It is in that place where God pulls you into the Holy of Holies. And it is there where the quickening takes place. And many Christians don't get here. That is why they have a mundane life. Their life is dead. There's depression on them. They cannot ascend into a high place because they are not energized. Are you guys with me? Go with me to Psalm 25 verse 5. Psalm 25 verse 5. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. On you I wait all the day. Say with me, all the day. I don't care. David is saying, I don't care if it is five minutes or if it is 24 hours. But I will wait on you, Lord. I will cover with you. I will be in the stillness of God, waiting with an eager expectation, with a oneness of mind that something is going to happen, that I'm not going to leave my room or my place until I have an encounter with you. May there be encounters this conference. May there be trances. May there be supernatural experiences. May there be supernatural raptures. It happens in the stillness of God. Where the heavens are open. Are you guys with me? What am I doing? I'm preaching your spirit ready. Go with me to Psalm 80 verse 18. Psalm 80 verse 18. Then we will not turn back from you. Listen to this. Then we will not backslide. Put in the King James. So we will not go back from you. We will not backslide. Quicken us. So if we quicken us. And we will call upon thy name. Quicken us. And we will pray. Quicken us, lest we backslide. Because unless you quicken us, we'll backslide. There must be a quickening in your spirit. And it is you that does it, although it's God that works in you. But the waiting comes from us. Are you guys with me? Go Isaiah 33 verse 2. Isaiah 33 verse 2. Lord, be gracious to us. We have waited for you. By the arm every morning, our salvation is also in the time of trouble. Listen to this. He says, we have waited for you. We have waited for you. Go with me to Psalm 37 verse 7. Zaronoskate. Psalm 37 verse 7. Rest in the Lord. Say with you, rest in the Lord. Wait patiently for Him. Do not fear because of Him who prospers in His way. Because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Next verse. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only causes harm. Next verse. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord. So with the those who wait on the Lord. They shall inherit the earth. Let me rephrase it. Those who wait on the Lord shall own land. Those who wait on the Lord shall own properties. They will inherit the earth. 
the earth will become their inheritance. It takes a waiting, it takes a resting. Are you guys with me? Go with you to Psalm 42, verse 7. You see, without waiting, without silence, without kava, waiting on the Lord, there's no power in your mouth. You can hear when a preacher encountered God or not. There's a frequency in their mouths. There's a fullness in their voice that you can see they were in the glory. When you look into somebody's eyes, you can see that they encountered or their eyes beheld the glory of the Lord. But there's power in their mouths. If there's no power in our mouths, angels are weakened. Demons are strengthened. The Bible says, by the word of God, his angels excel in strength. So by the lack of the word, they decrease in speed and strength. And demons increase. Are you guys with me? You can have somebody, they can take a mic, and they can pray and nothing happens. And then you can have somebody else, they can take a microphone and they can pray for the blood. And all of a sudden, demons begin to manifest. What's the difference? Both prayed the same prayer. The one waited on God. The one has a reputation. The one is known in hell and heaven. The one is feared in hell. Are you guys with me? Psalm 42, listen to this. Deep calls unto deep at the noise of the waterfalls. All your waves and billows have gone over me. Next verse. The Lord will command His loving kindness in the daytime, so the daytime. And in the night His song shall be with me. A prayer to God for my life. Meaning that the presence of God, when you begin to wait for Him, waiting in the day and the night, it is like deep that calls unto deep. It is... You see, I can preach and I can walk through the crowds and then I can just feel a pulling towards somebody. It is deep calling unto deep. And it is that person placing a demand. If I'm a sensitive preacher, I can feel it. If I'm an insensitive preacher, I cannot feel it. Are you guys with me? Say with me, be still and know that I'm God. Go Isaiah 30 verse 15. I know I'm throwing out a lot of verses. I'm just giving you the, the, the context of, of, of waiting. Isaiah 30 verse 15. For thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning, say with me, in returning, and rest, you shall be saved. In returning and rest, you shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. But you would not, verse 16, and you said, no, for we will flee on horses, therefore you shall flee. And we will ride on swift horses, therefore those who pursue you shall be swift. Go back to verse 15. He says, in returning in rest, you shall be saved. In quietness and confidence, in the stillness of God, shall be your strength. Your strength is locked up in the secret place. 
Are you guys with me? Where do I get my strength from? You see, what did Delilah do? I said yesterday that I believe that there is a shift that is coming where the spirit of Delilah head will be cut off because Delilah goes for the church and is looking for the source of power that is in the church to destroy that source where is your source say with me stillness the secret place but every church has their source and the spirit of Delilah is after that source to stop the power of God from moving within a church and that is how we have resulted and given birth of the seeker sensitive churches what is seeker sensitive churches there's no move of the spirit there's no power there's no presence there's no devils being cast out there's no miracles being happening have your seats there was a church big church in the nation i won't say the name one of the pastors told us we asked the, the, them, somebody I knew asked them, so, you know, they said, do, do you guys have a move of the Spirit? And the, and, the, and the pastor said, yeah, one of the pastors in this huge church, huge, 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 huge. He said, oh, we have a move of the Spirit. It's like, wow. He said, so, you guys, praying in tongues you 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 casting out demons no 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 not that move of the spirit I said, what move of the spirit so we're getting people saved okay that's good but, and they say casting out demons and the, and the pastor said I said I've been here 20 years we don't I've never seen we don't do it what There's some deliverance clips of ours that goes viral and, and one church move and one big church move and wrote a whole article against it because their people began to look at it and stuff like that. And so they have to convince their people now. So they wrote this big article to say that, um, to say that uh, there's no more casting out of devils and if you cast the demon out in the name of Jesus, he's going to bring back seven more worse. And, and all we need to do is just preach the gospel to the person. The person will be saved. Jesus, so, so the person, the theologian that was arguing with them said, but uh, we're standing up for me and, and, and was arguing with him and said, but, but what, was, what about Jesus' command that said, go and cast out devils, make disciples, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Must we throw that out now as well? The church has become seeker sensitive, lukewarm cannot cast a fly out of a room, cannot prophesy a headache, cannot do anything. And they think their lives are right. You can be unsaved. You get unsaved Christians. Mannequin Christians. They look good from far. But once you get close to inspect, you realize this thing is fake. Are you guys with me? That is why we push to say, and we get persecuted for it. Trust me, we've been persecuted for years. We don't care too much, but we've been persecuted for years. That the power has to return to the church. Raw power. Never apologize. If somebody's being set free in the back and they're screaming, never apologize. Let the Holy Ghost move. Let miracles happen. Let people experience joy. Let people experience freedom. That we, we pray for revival, and when revival comes, we want to stop it. And the curse that is on this city, that has just allowed and tolerated anything in the church. As I said to you, all those pastors that I met that place for the other team that tried to come on to me. I said to somebody, I said, in Cape Town, you have to plant with a covering. If you don't have a covering, uh, somebody else is going to cover you. Eh? I'm, jo I'm joking. <laughs> have your seats. And for that, I think we're losing another couple or two. Um. <laughs> when 
And that pastor whispered into my ear, my leafy. I'm telling you, that was, that was it for me. Say with me stillness. If you can be still, practice it every day for one month, you will be a powerhouse. Ah. Power comes by stillness. You know, sometimes I will, uh, I will drive to a service and I'll just be still. Somebody can talk or something like that and I'm being driven to a service and I'm just literally, I'm just sitting still. I don't talk one word. I don't say nothing because my spirit is communing with God. And I'm in a place of stillness because I need to know what's going to happen in the service. Go Psalm 62 verse 2. Psalm 62 verse 2. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. Go on. How long will you attack a man? You shall be slain, all of you, like a leaning wall and a tottering fence. Next verse. They only consult to cast him down from his high position. They delight in lies. They bless you with their mouths, but they curse you inwardly. Next verse. My soul waits silently for God alone. For my expectation is from Him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. Say, He is my defense. I shall not be moved. Who is the one that shall not be moved? Whose soul silently waits upon the Lord. Next verse. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge. Listen. Say with me, in waiting is my protection. Say in waiting is my defense. Waiting is the place where the devil cannot touch you are you guys with me it is the place where the devil cannot reach you or attack you it is your fortress it brings a quickening listen to me listen to me let's go to Isaiah 40 verse uh, 30 uh, 40 verse 31 40 verse 31 let's see let's see and I want to have time to minister to you. I don't want us to go on till too late. Because we have tomorrow as well. And the night thereafter. So listen to this. I want to give you five things quickly. That will be restored. When we wait on the Lord. It says, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Are you guys with me? So here is the promises for those who are saying, I will caval with God. I will silently wait for Him. And I'm preaching, I'm giving you five things just now before we minister to people here. And the Lord ministered to me about people here. And usually the first night, first two nights or so, I just do word. We do good word so that we can prepare your spirit for once mantles fall or the move comes or a wave comes in. We'll be obedient to it. Don't worry. Never rush God. One thing I've learned. But those who wait on the Lord, number one, say with me, spiritual energy. It will bring the energizing power of God upon your life. It will give you strength. Renew your strength. Say with me, renew your strength. So the first thing it will do is it will bring energy. It will renew your strength. It will bring back your power. 
like a battery of a cell phone that needs to be charged. In the same way, your spiritual life must be charged. How do you charge it? Being in a place of silence with God, waiting on Him, praying, worshiping, whatever it might do, but until your spirit gets to a place, your knower that is right here, gets to a place where it just suddenly heals to Him. It just suddenly gives over and you can feel the anointing on you. And it's at that place of stillness. And if you can remain there, you get spiritually charged. Are you guys with me? Uh, go with me to, well, let me carry on reading. They shall mount up. Say with me, mount up. With wings like eagles. Meaning, for an eagle to fly, an eagle discern and detects the currents of the wind. Go to Deuteronomy 32, 11. Deuteronomy 32, 11. As an eagle stirs up its nest, it hovers over its young, spreading out its wings, taking them up. Say so with me, taking them up. Carrying them on its wings. So the Lord alone led him, and there was no foreign God with him. So he says, an eagle spread its wings, take him up, which means that when an eagle flies, it detects the currents of the wind. An eagle doesn't, doesn't give out energy. It just detects the winds, and the winds will mount up the eagle. It uses the wind of the Holy Ghost. When you are an eagle Christian, you can detect the wind of the Holy Ghost that can suddenly promote you and take you higher. Other Christians who are in the flesh, they will toil and they will work and nothing will happen. But once you detect the currents of the wind of the Spirit, it will receive promotion upon promotion upon promotion. Which means that once you wait on the Lord, your discernment is being restored. Your sensitivity is being restored. Have your seats. Are you guys with me? Your sense, say with me, sensitivity. Listen, when you are weak, you don't know who is talking to you. You don't know if it is God speaking to you, if it is the devil speaking to you. When Esau was weak and weary, he sold his birthright. When you are weak, you don't know whose voice you are hearing. But when you are strong and your discernment is restored, you can know suddenly, this is God speaking. This is the devil. This is my flesh. There's a sensitivity. Sensitivity is so powerful. Jesus, when he was walking, in the crowds and the lady with the issue of blood touched the hem of his garment the Bible says that he felt virtue going out of him leaving him and he turned around and he said who touched me and obviously we, we know the story but what happened Jesus was so sensitive the word sensitivity in the Greek is dokimatso. He was so sensitive. He felt power leaving him. Many Christians fail to feel power leaving them. You're going to be by this conference Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. We do our fire service, mantling service, whatever it might be. Whatever God is doing, we're laying hands on everybody, everything here. Tomorrow we're going to be laying hands on a lot of people as well. Tomorrow for importation of power. Wednesday for the fire of God. It's a mantling service. And you'll feel on top of the world. But if you fail to have discernment and sensitivity, you will fail to feel power leak out of you. So what happens is, you'll go to work. You'll be in a worldly environment. 
all of a sudden people are influencing you. You're beginning to do what they are doing. Then you're watching this TV show and you're behaving like this and all of a sudden power is leaving you and you don't feel it. A week, two weeks down the line and all of a sudden you feel like I don't want to read my Bible anymore. I don't want to pray anymore. Ah, that encounter is fake. That didn't change me. No. You were not taking care of your spirits. Are you guys with me? In the same way as you have to be sensitive to get power into you, when we lay hands on you, when we minister to you, I minister to people who are sensitive. Sometimes we will walk through the crowds like we do in worship. Somebody just stands and looks at me like this. Like, you know, I'm uh, like they, they owe, they God owes them a favor. So I'll look at them. I won't even give two seconds to that person because they fleshly, carnal. Unbeliever, that's fine. I can understand that. Believer, you need a slap. That's what you need. Iemand moet jou bestraf dat jy nie weet of jy kom of gaan nie. You stand like this in worship. Hmm. You'll still stand like this and you don't know that the one that is in the service has the power to remove your breath in one second. Now if you're an unbeliever, that's fine. Because I understand that. I, I won't ever judge on that. You don't know God, so, so that's, that's fully understandable. But if you're a believer, may the fear of God come on your life. Don't ever stand like that. And rather run away like, like the other couple did. That, that's better. The devil at least ran, you know. I fear God too much, man. You won't stand like that for, for Cyril Ramaphosa. But for God, you will stand like that. And then we wonder, why is God not working in my life? Blah, 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 blah. And the churches has breed this mindset. The religion has breed this mindset in people. So sensitivity, I need to be sensitive for the power to, you see the Holy Ghost is a gentleman. He doesn't force himself on anyone. He only comes on those who wants to receive him, whose hearts are open. Say with me sensitivity. I will prophesy. Once the spirit of prophecy comes, whether it's tonight, tomorrow night, I can prophesy by the gift. It's very easy. Prophesy over anybody. But I'm, you know, once we're going to go a lot with prophecy is when the spirit of prophecy is present. So say with me discernment. Hmm. So the third thing that waiting will restore. Put on the scripture, Isaiah 40 verse 31. You see, if I was in my hometown now, we would only be starting now. But I heard that, that in Cape Town, people go to bed early, you know, so we need to finish. Because the new wine is poured out last, usually. But it's okay. It's okay. We'll do the long service for Wednesday night. They shall mount up. Say with me, mount up. So your altitude will change. Say with me, altitude. Go with me, Deuteronomy 32, verse 13. Deuteronomy 32, verse 13. Listen to this. He made him ride in the heights of the earth, that he, might, that he may eat the produce of the fields, he made him draw honey from the rock. Say with me, honey from the rock. 
and oil from the flinty rock. Go back one verse. And the, I haven't forgotten to prophesy over you with a pen and the paper. I said I will in the conference. It just happened that you are at Cape Town. So I will do that. Okay, you thought I forgot by Centurion. So God just made it sure that I'm not a liar. And uh, I will do that. He made him draw honey from the rock and oil from the flinty rock. The one translation says he siphoned out oil from the flinty rock. Where? So with me in the high place. Altitudes. What are we doing when we're preaching revelation? We're taking you higher. What are we doing when we're worshiping? We're taking you higher. What are we doing in a service like this? Even when we peak preaching, we're taking you higher. Once your altitude changes, the way you see the enemy changes. The 10 spies that went with Joshua and Caleb, they saw the enemy as giants in their sight because their altitude was low. But Joshua and Caleb says, no, 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 no. They were like grasshoppers in our sight. And we were like giants in their sight because their altitude was higher. They came from a perception and a perspective of change of heights. Come on, are you guys with me? Say with me ascension. That is what we are doing. We're taking you and we're shifting and we're putting you into a high place. What happens when you wait on the Lord? He takes you into a high place. Say with me, high places. Say it again. Say high places. It is the ability to ascend. Once you ascend, you walk out of your prayer room like there's no problem or distraction or enemy. Everything is below your feet. You will trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. You are highly seated with Christ in heavenly places. It is in a place of ascension, the Bible says, that Christ who ascended gave gifts to men. It is in a high place where gifts are found. It is in a high place where you will meet God. Every prophet were on a mountain. The Bible says prophets came from the heel of God. Coming down with a symbol. They were in the mountain of God. Most encounters that happened from Moses to Abraham to Elijah were happening on the mountaintops. High places. Are you guys with me? In your prayer room, make sure even though you are on a funeral on your knees, that you are going into a high place. That when you come out of there, there's no problem. The family might look at you one way or worker might say there's this problem. You changed your perspective. You changed your ability of sight. You're looking at the problem from a mountaintop perspective. Your altitude is changing. Are you guys with me? Have your seats, have your seats. You see, you cannot understand this, what I'm preaching, when you are in a low place. Carnal Christians live in a low place. They live in the valley. Uh, The anointing is found very strong in a high place. It is in a high place where you get drunk under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. So then it says, put on the scripture. Isaiah 40 verse 31. I think they're battling now. They shall run. Say with you, they shall run. And not be weary. Waiting on God will cause speed and acceleration to come into your life. Um... When Jesus got into the boat of the disciples, the Bible says as he got into the boat, that when they opened up their eyes again, 
they were on the other side because Jesus got into their boats. When he came to the wedding where the first miracle was done, he said to his, to his mother Mary, he says, bring water, barrels of water. And he turned the water into the best wine. Wine that has to take 20 to 30 years to ferment. He did it in one second because of the anointing of acceleration. Jobs and promotion that has to take 10 years under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. When your soul silently awaits for God can happen in three months. Say with me, I will be a testimony. Say it again. Say, I will be a testimony. Listen here, these things we are preaching is supernatural. It has to be snatched. Don't think, but my job will never. No, 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 no. We serve a God with whom all things are possible. Have your seats. You are a supernatural being. I'm going to minister tonight on this, uh, tomorrow night. You are the sperma of God. The seed of God. The incorruptible sperm. Are you guys with me? You are a supernatural being. A being which the Bible calls in the Greek kainos never existed before super natural super powerful above and beyond never existed before never created before one of a kind being kainos that is who you are the moment you got born again, you must stop seeing yourself as a human. Jesus says, do you not know that you are gods? And they hate me for this. They wrote many articles on us, on us, and many videos. To be honest, in the little gods go, uh, uh, doctrine. Yes, I am. Jesus says, do you not know that you, he made us the sons of God. We have been made the sons of God by the power of God. So if I'm a son of a God, am I a God? Okay. So he has restored you to your original position. That means if your boss is unsaved, yes, there are worldly orders. But there's favor that you have with the one who created him. They might say you are not qualified. Your knees hit the deck while you're praying. And you say, I receive my inheritance, my right and my privilege as a son of the king. As a son with royal blood. And you'll see the impossible being done. And they'll be like it was <laughs> with grandmother Esther. Have your seats who stood in front of the king. We think Esther was this beautiful young lady. One night with the king, you know. Which basically means one night stand, but let's leave that alone. One night with the king. Uh, and they depict this image as if it's this young, Esther was around 75 years old. In the middle of 16 year olds who were their whole lives trained with a beauty pageant for the king one year going through a treatment of perfumes and oils and all that stuff your grandmother Esther is standing with all these young beautiful girls and the king's eyes became blinded to every young girl there 
And all he could see was Esther. Who carried the anointing of favor. Which we call the anointing of Rayon. Ratson. Ratson anointing. The anointing of favor. It will blind your enemies. It will blind your boss from your weaknesses. From your inabilities and your inqualifications. It will blind them from anything that you might not be able to do. And they'll be fixated on you. It is for business where contracts will come to you. Where it is supposed to go to others. You will feel but you are not qualified. But yet they say, I want you to do that job. Are you guys with me? Say with me the anointing of the Holy Ghost. What is this that happens with waiting? Have your seats, have your seats. Speed, say with your speed. Acceleration. Elijah on the mountaintop after he defeated the prophets of Baal. He put his head between his leg and knees and he began to pray and it began to rain. And the Bible says the hand of the Lord came upon him. And he picked it up and he girded up his mantle. And he began to run after Ahab. And he overtook the chariot of Ahab. The hand of the Lord came upon Philip. And he overtook the chariot of the Ethiopian. Supernatural speed and acceleration. I speak to one pastor. I say to them, Yo, I say, you know, um, or they said something, something, something. I said, Lord, but yes, you go fast. I said, no, you go slow. I said, you go so fast. I'm mean, like, if it's just this, then you, you do that. It's the anointing. Where the anointing is, there's speed. Don't come with this. We have relaxed and it's just everything is fine and... No, no, no. I understand ease, but in that ease, there is speed. Even when you move in the spirit, when you pray, there's speed. The anointing, nobody can tell me otherwise, the Holy Ghost works with speed. And if somebody is not in that flow of speed, they grieve the Holy Ghost. Once He comes upon your life, in a tangible way, in a, in a way that we have been preaching last night and tonight, there will be speed in your business, speed everywhere. They're telling us all the time, calm down, relax. You're taking church too fast. Hey, there's millions going to hell. The anointing, God, everything is being sped up. Are you guys with me? Mm. Where the anointing comes on you, you will run with speed. You will have a maturity come on you where they'll say that you're 20 years ahead of your time. I had friends of ours, ministers of ours at our, at our house. Uh, very well known and very, very, very uh, uh, much, much older than us. And they said to my wife and I, they say, you're two decades ahead. And I was thinking to myself, they were speaking financially and under the anointing and everything. I was thinking to myself, but it ought to be so. That is the testimony that we should have. What will it glorify God if I still sit in a small little building in the sanctuary in which we had and just there doing nothing for God? No, let the anointing come and move with speed. What do we need right now? Listen, in two years, we need 85 million in Centurion. And I already have faith for 30 million. To, I know that it'll come in like this. And there we don't hope and pray. We say, you, we need you to give 4 million. You think I joke? Where's, where's your hand? Uh, <laughs> now you think I joke. That's what we do. So we need seven people to give four million. So we found three. I just go to them. I said, I need you to give four million. Thank you. Okay. Did you give four million? Thank you. You to give four million. Thank you. You might think, what is this church? We're building the kingdom. Yeah. 
That's how it should be. And what do we do after that? That I'm going to need 10 people to give a million each. And we're going to go and I'm going to say, listen, I want you to give a million. You, you, you can give a million. You can take a bond on your house. You can do something, but you can get a million. If I can give four million, you can, you can give a million. And that, before you know it, 30 million. Then we can start. But we need 85 million to build. Um, it's not Cape Town, unfortunately, where you guys have so much land and stuff. And By us, land is 24 million just for like two hectare, three hectare. 24 million rand. And uh, we can't find land. But... Um, but we will, we have to. So, so it's speed. It is, that is how we do it. And, and that is not even faith. That, that is just, I know that will happen. Faith for me is, okay, from 30 to 85. <sighs> Are you guys with me? There's no time to waste. I look at some of these pastors, all they do, they counsel from morning to, one pastor friend of mine, he counsels from morning to night. I said, when are you going to build the kingdom? You've been counseling for eight years now. Build the kingdom. We haven't done anything. I don't counsel one person. Okay, I'm a prophet, so that's okay. I don't counsel one person. I don't do hospital visits. I don't do funerals. And I don't do marriages. Unless if it's somebody I feel I need to marry. But I definitely don't do funerals. And I, uh, and I don't do... I do home visits. I mean, if I, if I feel late. I did it in the beginning of the church. But... We have this messed up, skewed up. Listen, you need to train the saints to do those things. For the work of the ministry. The apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers are there to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. They need to do it. So that your time can be given to the word and prayer. So that I can deliver a message under the anointing. Break the yoke of bondage that there is. Have the anointing in the church. Are you guys with me? So say with me speed. We'll be finished just now. Don't worry. Let me just try to get a song. See if I can find one. Let's go take a brush. Get a kid. Let's go take a brush. Get a kid. Where's the scripture where it says, sorry, I've got a new Bible here, where it says, as a deer panteth for the water brooks. Is it Psalm 43 or 63? It's not 63. Maybe it is 42, 43. Just go Google it for, there for me. 42, Psalm 42. Put on Psalm 42, verse 1. Las koteke brede na mandushka Say with me protection. Say it again. Say protection. Listen to this. As Oh, before we go to this, go with me to Job 28 verse 7. Job 28 verse 7. Zerano. Listen to this. That path no bird knows, nor has the falcon's eye seen it. Go on. The proud lions have not trodden it. Nor has the fierce lion passed over it. He puts his hand on the flint. He overturns the mountains at the roots. Go back. One verse back. One verse back. The proud lions have not trodden it. Nor has the fierce passed over it. There is a place where Satan cannot find you. There's a place where the enemy, where you are hidden from the enemy. There's a place where Satan, when he comes close, his eyes cannot see you. It is his hiding place. It is a place where your soul silently waits for the, for the Lord. Go be to Psalm 42, verse 1. Psalm 42, verse 1. As the deer pants for the water brooks, so my soul, uh, so my soul pants for you, O God. Next verse. My soul thirsts for God, 
for the living God, when shall I come and appear before God? Go verse 1. Listen to this. As a deer panteth for the water brooks. There's only two reasons a deer goes towards the water brooks. Number one, because he's thirsty. But number two, because an enemy is chasing him. When an enemy is chasing a deer, a deer will run to and find a place of water that once it touches the water, the scent of the deer goes away and the enemy can no longer find the deer. That once you find the water brooks, the place of his presence, your scent goes away and the enemy can no longer detect you or find you. Are you guys with me? Say with me his presence. Say with me the place of waiting, the place of stillness. Stand to your feet, stand to your feet, church. Les cote rebena mas cote. I said to somebody there in the back yesterday, I said, I'm going to prophesy over you this week. Are you here? Les cote ke na maros ke rebena ma. Come to the front. Breathe upon me, sweet spirit of. Let's worship, let's worship, let's worship. Come on, worship as you have heard the sermon. Let your spirit be hungry, let your spirit be seeking. Oh God, I yield to your spirit. I'm warm. I adore Jesus I adore Jesus I adore Your holy name Lift it up, come on, lift it up I lift my hands in surrender to your name. Oh, shine. I'm healing to your spirit. That's beautiful. That's beautiful.
in the building right now and you need a physical healing, whether it's your back, your knees, your hip, or your neck, or your shoulders, something I'm speaking of in the bones, a physical healing, your back, knees, neck, shoulders, maybe some other part I haven't called out. Raise your hands to me that I can see you. Get to the front for me. Come stand here in front. Come stand here in front that we can pray for you. Come stand. You sent your word and you healed my disease. You are the Lord, my on you I looked and I saw a daughter do you have a daughter do you have two one, one daughter how old is she is she like she, four? she's going to three now three yes prophet I looked at the age four because I'm seeing another child I'm looking and I'm seeing in the spirit like two daughters now just hold on for the spirit of the Lord is saying son I will ordain her for there's an angel that is behind her although I'm looking and I'm seeing too Amen. but the Lord is saying my hand is upon your life Praise. and you have prayed a prayer and you said God use me Amen. for your glory Amen. I will give you my life Amen. And I saw a mantle of evangelism falling upon hey. you. Uh, uh. And the Lord is saying not only that, for that is for a time being, but I'm going to take you and your family into a place hey. where you will actually plant a work. Amen. Because I'm looking and I'm seeing corporates or I'm seeing that there's still secular work, something like that. But the Lord is saying I'm putting you Completely, I'm cutting all ties. Any income that is required, I will cause it from this night as I lay hands and as I anoint you because the Lord is showing me a mantle of an evangelist that is falling upon you. But don't confuse evangelism with what the calling is where you are going. Because the Lord is saying, I have ministered to you silently. Amen. But you didn't want to accept it fully. Because of what others might have told you. But there's an anointing and a calling of an apostle upon your life. Hey. Ah. And I will cause you to do a lot of works. Amen. You'll be able to break through in regions and areas. Amen. But I will cause signs, wonders and miracles. Amen. To follow you, says the Lord. To follow your ministry, I will cause signs, wonders, and miracles of the apostle to follow you. For right now, you are in a time of labor, and you are in a time of labor and toil. But I shift you by the power of the Spirit of God in alignment with what God has called you to be. I command the heavens to be opened over your life. Your voice will be heard in the realm of the Spirit. For they will hear you. They will invite you. But do not fear the afflictions and do not fear the attacks. And do not fear the persecution. But my hand of favor is coming on you. For I'm landing 20 years into your future. And I'm seeing you planted many works already. And they shall come to you for wisdom. And they shall come to you and they shall say, but how did you get this right? How did you get that right? And you'll say it is by the grace of God. It is by the grace and the anointing. It's nothing of me.
If I be a prophet this night, if I miss this one, I am not a prophet and I will stop prophesying. But the Lord is saying, I will make a sign out of you. 36 months from now, a ministry will stand. Because I will breathe upon you. I will inspire you. But the mantle that is falling on you this night, visions and dreams will come and multiply. <laughs> For I see how your hands will feed many. I see how your heart has been to feed many. Your heart has been to help the poor, many. And the Lord is saying, because of that, I will bless you financially. 36 months from now, you will lack no thing. But be very careful for those that want to take ownership of you. Be very careful for those who want to take the, take the glory for your work and take the credit for your work. Be very careful for long relationships that wants to come in and take the credit and say, I am the one who raised him up. I am the one who raised him up, you know. Never submit to that, says the Spirit of God. And as long as you keep your eyes on me, I shall lift you. But by the power of the Holy Ghost right now, a fresh mantle of evangelism and then the apostolic, in Jesus' mighty name, Lift him up. Lift him up. Fire of God on his life. Fire, fire. Fresh, 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 fresh upon his life. Give me oil. Oil. Never to be the same again. Ministry never to be the same again. You see, when you came out running last night, the Lord said to me, This man, tell him he's a man of God. Prophets appoint, prophets anoint. Prophets anoint kings, prophets anoint ministers. So I anoint you in Jesus' mighty name. May the fire and the electricity of God, may there be impartation that from this night things will never be the same again. Give Him the grace. Give Him the grace. I rebuke every orphan spirit from his life. Every orphan spirit. Let him be secure. In Jesus' name. Come on, give Jesus a praise offering. That's your prophet's reward. I see the angel ascending and ascending. I see the angel ascending and ascending now. Come on, worship him, worship him, worship him. Oh, I, see, yeah. I, see, I see the angels ascending and descending. I see the angels ascending and descending i see the angel ascending and descending now Whoa. No. Whoa.
for sickness if you can't move a body part like there's limitation or tremendous pain if you move it take one step forward for me so that I can see you thank you thank you just one step forward for me out of the rest Zabroska adedenoska tekenabandroska taya delebrea Zebros get a key. Has got a mas got a key. Res got a kedre de noskate de lebretanama. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Church, stretch out your hands towards them. There's people with a lot of pain here. I'm going to say one prayer. I'm going to rebuke the spirit of infirmity. Then I'm going to come lay hands on you. The moment I'm going to first lay hands on those who took one step out. The moment I lay hands on you or even before work the miracle do a movement that you couldn't do before or somebody behind me Pastor Stephen is going to come and work it also for you the gift of miracles is worked by the authority of the Holy Ghost by the blood of Jesus Christ I take authority over the spirit of infirmity. I take authority over every spirit of illness and sickness. I bind your power. I curse the sickness. Loose them. Loose them. Loose them. In Jesus' name, loose them. In Jesus' name, I curse you. I command the pain to leave their bodies. I command a movement to come back to every bone. In Jesus' mighty name right now, Father, may you be glorified. 
in this place. May the blood of Jesus Christ cleanse them. May you be glorified in this place. We rebuke every curse and we command miracles to take place in Jesus' mighty name. Let's worship. Prophet, we, we see a lot of healings. Prophet, he couldn't lift up his leg like that without pain. Now he says there's no pain in his left leg anymore. Lift, 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 lift. No pain. Come walk with me. Come on, he had spine, trauma in his spine. Yeah. No pain, come on. Prof so it's going to take a while, just keep moving it, just keep moving Prophet, Prophet, there's many miracles. He says he couldn't bend down or move his hips without not having pain. He says all the pain is gone and he can move like that. Come on, give Jesus a praise offering. Prophet, Bless. I want you to see something. He's got no crucial ligaments in his kneecaps. None whatsoever, is that right? 21 years ago okay. and you you told me earlier that you couldn't do any lunges any squats without pain can you show us come on come on let's see both legs both legs i want to see both legs is there any pain no pain come on give jesus a praise of yes prophet she had knee problems and he huh? says all the pain is gone, knee problems, knee pains. Yeah, yeah, what was, you had, you had, what was wrong in your knees? I just, uh, stiffness in my knees. Okay, stiffness. okay. I couldn't bend it like this. Okay, go all the way down. <laughs> Can you walk up the stairs? Come. Come on, let's give you. Yes, 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 yes. Prophets, you prayed for her. God touched her, and all the pain is gone. So, what was wrong? What, tell me what was wrong. Uh, no cartridge in my right foot. No cartridge in your right foot. Mm -mm. And you had a in your back? Slip disc. Slip disc. Bend all the way down. Come up. No pain. Come walk with me. So walk with me. And I know you said to me you were in constant pain. 
No pain, eh? Huh? I see everything is changing The fire of the Lord is falling Consuming every fiber of my being Come and listen to church, come on The Spirit of the Lord upon me And suddenly my season's changing Your every word for some Oh, oh, oh. Oh, and suddenly, suddenly moving, suddenly changing. I believe in the God of the suddenly. Tables are turning, suddenly shifting. I prophesy the year of my suddenly. As I declare your word, suddenly every word you spoke, prophecy now fulfilled. And I can see every giant fall, as I declare your word, and no. I see everything is changing The fire of the Lord is falling Consuming every fiber of my being Oh, the Spirit The Spirit of the Lord upon me And suddenly my season's changing Your every word for certain So she had 14 years of osteoporosis and she couldn't bend or lift her knees up. Could only lift it up, lift it up as high as you can right now. This one. Bend down completely. Go down like this. Come up. Go like this. All the pain gone. And your back. It's all, it's today I have very pain today. A lot of pain. It's all gone. Come on, let's give Jesus a praise of <laughs> The lay will walk, the blind will see, the deaf will hear. Whoa. And even the dead will live again. Come on, this anointing. 
This anointing speaks, anointing frees, anointing heals. Whoa! And even the dead will live again. The lame will walk. The lame will walk. Stand up. The blind Prophet. will see. The dead this will hear. This lady. This lady had a stroke. She couldn't walk, but last night you just laid hands on her in the crowd, and yes. she walked out on her own. Her arm, she couldn't move her arm or her hand, and she, now she can move it. Move it. Look at that. Don't worry. I believe. Yes, I believe. He's a miracle God. He's a miracle God. I believe. She was paralyzed with a stroke. Give Jesus a praise offering. The Holy Ghost in me. The Holy Ghost in me. The Holy Ghost in me. Yeah. The Holy Ghost in me. 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 Nothing's too hard for him. side over your life that my story is changing because my story is changing my life is changing when the Lord intervenes my story is changing my life is changing oh, when the Lord intervenes We've got more healing here taking place. This lady had lower back pain in your legs, is that right? In your lower back? And is there, is, is there any pain right now? No, it's gone. Yes, it's completely gone. Can you show me something that you couldn't do before? Come on, church. There's literally miracles breaking out. 
immediately without the life amen it was all just a matter of time this year i prophesied for this and every promise will be fulfilled is more back pain being healed here can you tell us what happened um it started um last week i started having back pains i couldn't stand i had to stand like this i couldn't put both of my feet down i couldn't walk long and i couldn't stand for a long time could only stand for two minutes now i have nothing like i have no pain i came here having a pain on my back pain but now i feel nothing show me <laughs> she's like a gymnast come on church let's give jesus christ the praise offering amen oh, my life is this is for greatness it was all just a matter of time oh this Prophet, this lady had an operation in her leg. She couldn't have her ankle. She couldn't move it or bend it. Now she can move oh. it 100%. Awesome. Give God glory. This, this lady's parents was here last night, and they gave a seat that her daughter can be healed. She came all the way from Worcester with back pain, shoulder pains, and leg pains. Every time it just moved the sickness. And she says, as he came into the building, the pain already started to leave her. But he says, as we prayed for, the pain left her completely. Come on, give Jesus a praise offering. Oh, you send your angels ahead to bring forth just what you said. There will be no more. Death will hear. Whoa, even the dead will live again. This anointing, this anointing speech, anointing praise, anointing heals. Whoa, even the dead will live again. The lame will walk, the lame will walk, the blind will see, the death will hear. Whoa, even the dead will live again. This anointing speech. Anointing trees, anointing hills. Whoa, even the dead will live again. And I believe, I believe He's a miracle God. He's a miracle God. I believe, I believe He's a miracle God. He's a miracle. Everything is. Everything is possible, nothing is impossible with our God. 
tribe of Judah. I can hear the rhythm of the lion of a tribe of Judah. And I can hear the rhythm of the lion of a tribe of Judah. And I can hear the rhythm of the lion of a tribe of Judah. Cause he's doing a new thing. So he's singing a new song. He's doing a new thing. So he's singing a new song. stand on your own now and you're good and before come on give Jesus a praise offering she, she, need, she needed a hip replacement and knees replacement now you keep working that miracle keep working that miracle keep working that miracle come on let's give Jesus a praise offering yeah. Come on, come on, praise him, praise him, praise him.
prophecy which prophet professor of my line i'm originally from the eastern cape east london i came here 2015 in a place called ashton two hours away from here i started in the eastern cape as an evangelist so i came 2015 then i began to pastor then this is a congregation that you are leading and many pastors are coming already and there's also a work that we started recently in queenstown in the eastern cape oh wow so i just want to Prophet, praise God, what you said upon my life is true. Wow, that is amazing. So I actually, I mean, I saw evangelism, but I saw the Lord is saying to me that, you know, because like there was a church, and you say you do evangelism. You did evangelism. Okay. Ah, okay. Wow. Okay. Okay. Well, there's an apostolic call on your life. Amen. And that's the prophet's reward. Come on, let's give Jesus a praise. Lord. Yeah. How many of you are going to see tomorrow night? Don't miss tomorrow night. For the sake of time, we can't go on, but don't miss tomorrow night. Tomorrow night is going to be a night of power. Okay, we're going to be ministering to a lot of people. Mantles of power is going to fall. And uh, raise your hands wherever you are. Raise your hands. Father, may your anointing be upon your people. May the glory of God be upon them. May you protect them, cover them, guide them even as far as they drive and bring them all back safely tomorrow. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Come and give him one more praise offering. God bless you. Thank you so much.